Braves come out of nowhere. In fact, the Braves, the first team in Major League history to win the series after being below 500 through August 1 or later. Our baseball lineup tonight, Ozzie Albies leads things off. Olsen and Riley Ozuna's hit the ball harder than anybody this early season. Travis Darno, the catcher, got the day off yesterday. He is back in the lineup, and they all are going to face the veteran U Darvish. Here are some of the numbers. It's 0-1. A real high ERA based on that disastrous second start. And you never know what you're going to get, except they want him to throw more four-seam fastballs. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. I mean, the trend over the last several years with you, Darvish, is more cutters and less four-seamers. But as we said last year, his four-seamer was very effective. 153 batting average against. His cutter, 340 batting average against. So you don't have to dig too deep to see what they want. They immediately go into the shift with Albies who's got a homer in the first three games. He swings at the first pitch and is fouled off at the plate. Tim Kirchner on baseball tonight. No one is ever in a four-game series at Petco. There's never been a five-game, but no one in a four-game series has ever hit a home run in each game. Next one from Darvish. And that is also fouled off at the plate, and he is ahead. 0-2, splitter at 88. Here are the three home runs. Spoke to Ron Washington before the game. So I'd love to see him hit a few more singles. But there's always been this debate around Ozzy. Should he just hit from the left side or the right side? Just focus on one. Well, this weekend, he's hit a home run from each. And he tries to dump one into left where the shift is left it open. And then he had a hard time getting his hand off the back. Yeah, an advantage right now, you. One, because of the shadows, but two, he's been able to throw that off-speed pitch for a strike. Every, all three pitches that he's thrown so far, none of them have been the heater. It's been cutter, splitter, splitter. Advantage, 0-2. Yeah, the advantage also to the pitcher because you can see the shadow cutting right across the infield. And that presents all sorts of problems, right? Eddie and right, Coney gives you an advantage. Well, it depends on who you're asking. I'm asking you both. No, if like asking it. me, if you're Personally. asking me, it's a lot of problems. <laughs> Machado is playing in the shortstop position. C.J. Abrams, young kid there with Hassan Kim, and that is a swing and a miss. Good start from Yu Darvish. Another splitter at 89, and he strikes out Ozzy Albies. Well, you can see the grip right there, Carl, and the tumbling dice action down and away, perfectly executed. Pick up the rotation on this, Eduardo. That's why they're showing this angle. Unfair. When you have that splitter in action, this time of this time of day here in Southern California, good luck. So here's Darvish to face Matt Olson, hitting over 400 early this year. First one to oh, Matt. Breaking pitch misses a slider. Want to know? Darvish again, six innings, didn't give up a hit against the Diamondbacks. You look under the hood of that start, though. He did walk four. The next outing, he got five outs and allowed nine runs to the Giants. Olsen did a home run yesterday to left field. Fouls this one down the line and into the seats. You could not have asked for a better start if you were the Atlanta Braves, given you just lost a living legend to Los Angeles, or you're Matt Olsen and you're moving back to the area you grew up in. So comfortable. Start that he's off makes it even easier. The 1 1. Another one fouled back. You know, it's a great point, Carl. And talking to Bob Melvin, he said that this guy was the easiest guy he's ever had to manage. I mean, you just write him in the lineup and you forget about him. He's never, never uh, any problems at all. Very low maintenance. And he's just a huge presence. His glove is terrific at first base. Yesterday stuck his bat out and drove one deep into left field for a homer. A one two. And this one in the left field and Olsen is aboard again. Fast start for Matt Olsen. Single as he goes the other way. How about letting the ball travel the entire time? This at bat started off with a curveball that he took that you Darvish thought was a strike. After that, he attacked him hard in, went up. This time this ball leaked out over the plate and he allowed it to travel and stay behind it again. Another hit with two strikes for Matt Olson. Matt Olson has done a whole bunch of work on 
cutting his strikeout rate in half. He's a terrific now two strike hitter. And we'll get into the things that he has done to help himself. Here's Austin Riley. First pitch he sees is a strike, a slider at 82. Think about Olsen. In 19 and 20, he was in the mid 20, low 30% strikeout rate. He cut it to 16% last year and is at a 17% clip this year. The one to Riley, big swing and a miss. There are the numbers, and that decline is the largest in baseball in the last two years. Simple thing is working in a cage with a pitching machine. 0-2 to Riley. Darvish looks for a second strike out of the inning, and a fastball misses away at 96. It's not your average pitching machine either, right? That no. pitching machine can throw 100. <laughs> so high-velocity pitching machines are certainly something you're starting to see more and more of. Abram shaded up the middle on a ground ball. The area to go is between first and second, but there's nothing doing there. A filthy sinker from Darvish. He's got a second strikeout. Well, just well executed. You can see the two-seam grip and riding underneath the swing. It's almost like it's reverse for back of the day where right-handers throw two seamers into righties and four seamers away. Here comes Marcel Ozuna, the left fielder, 325 to start with three homers. Seven runs batted in. The infield doesn't shift at all from Riley to Ozuna. Abrams playing on the second base side, a second, and he fouls that straight back. Outfield is Jerickson and Profar in left, Trent Grisham in center. Matt Beatty is in right tonight. And if you look at Grisham, it's basically in a direct line behind Abrams and shaded towards right. Against Ozuna, who's a hole hitter and hitting it as hard as anybody in baseball to start this season. The 01. Yeah, but one thing that I do love is how they're playing the defense right now. Yes, you're leaving left center field open, but with the, sh the shadows, we saw the first pitch fastball fouled off. And you look at the Marcel, he can hit pitches above 95 miles per hour really well, and his hard hit rate is huge. Statcast was powered by Google Cloud. This is at least early. Game one from Darvish this season. This stuff is moving everywhere. It's a great rotation on that slider. Looks like it's a strike a long time and still ends up in the dirt. Unhittable. One ball, two strikes. Albee struck out. Olsen a single. Wiley struck out. The next one to Marcel. Will not chase. You're a pitcher. We have this discussion all the time. If he strikes Ozuna out, did he strike out the side? In my book, yeah. In your book. It doesn't matter if there's a base runner. No. No, this is a debate. I, I, I guess define the side, right? That the definition of the side is supposed to be three up and three down. I side with you. I take, yeah, you strike out three, yes. Take credit. Two and two. Three balls, two strikes, a fastball that ran up at 95 miles an hour. This is interesting right now. If you're Marcelo Zuna, you're thinking, okay, he opened everybody else up in this inning with an off-speed pitch, but he opened me up with a fastball. It's 3-2, runner will be in motion. What do I throw? What does he throw me here? If it's you, Darvish, most likely it's a slider. But then again, could it be the fastball? Payoff pitch, runner goes, swing and a miss. So in Coney's world, he just struck out the side. In spite of giving up that single to Olsen, he strikes out Albies, Riley, and Ozuna. The Padres to the plate for the first time on Sunday Night Baseball. ESPN's telecast of Sunday Night Baseball is presented by Taco Bell. San Diego, California, the Padres, Hugh Darvish outstanding in the top half of the first. And now 
As they get set to come to the plate, we take a look at the lineup that Bob Melvin in this first year in San Diego puts out there. Grisham has struggled to start. Nola's behind the plate. Cornerworth has also not gotten off to a great start. Machado and Hosmer have been outstanding. Profar has got a bunch of home runs to start. Hassan Kim and C.J. Abrams round it out. See the number of runs they're scoring a game, which is midway in the league 15. And here you go with a kid, last name Elder, out of the University of Texas. 22 years old. You know, I think it's a trend, Carl and Eduardo. You're going to see these kids coming out of college that are ready to go. Just one full year in the minor leagues. Here he is at 22 years old, and he's got a chance to establish himself as a rotation piece. What sport isn't that happening in? Youth being served. And it's interesting, you have so many college pitching coaches and hitting coaches go to the majors without any major league experience. Now you're seeing the pitchers come out of college and jump in right here. Both he and Spencer Strider, who's in the bullpen. First two guys not drafted in the first round of 2020 to advance to the major leagues. They're both here tonight. There's a good chance we see Strider later in this game. That first pitch was in there. For strike one, Trent Grisham hitting just a buck 50 to start. Working quickly as Elder, and that one is down and in. A slider at 84 to even it up at one and one. Think about Elder, too. He does throw around the plate. Grisham's not a guy that will chase, and he swings at that, fouls it straight back. He had the fifth lowest chase rate last year. Remember that draft 2020 was reduced to just five rounds. Torkelson's here. Detmers and Garrett Crochet. Spencer Strider and Bryce Elder. In there, and he punches him out. Rare Grisham caught looking. Then Elder starts off where he left off with a punch out. I talked about Elder being a movement specialist. Nothing he throws is straight, and here's the two-seamer right in the front door, catching just a bit of the corner. How many times did we see those from Greg Maddox? Mm -hmm. and, you know, just freezing guys and the hitters knowing that he has it in his back pocket, yet it is really difficult to pull the trigger on. Ready to pitch to Austin Nola, and that one is down for ball one. Doug Eddings has the plate tonight. Ryan Knight is at first. Billy Miller, who got into it a little bit with Kenley Jansen late yesterday, is at third. Roberto Ortiz is out there at second, the 1 0. That's outside. You can hear Eddings say it. No, that's outside. The Braves aggressive with the shift, something that they did last year for the last two months of the season. It worked to perfection. That's in there for a strike. It's interesting, Eduardo and Coney. Look at where Matt Olson is. Ground ball, he's not running as far as Nola would to first, but he's running. Way inside, three and one. You're playing defense right now, you have to love that Elder's tempo. Just gets back on the rubber. By the time the ball's thrown back to him, he's already straddling that rubber. That's ball four inside. Nola draws a walk. First base runner for San Diego, and now you get to Jake Cornerworth and Manny Machado on deck. So here's Cornerworth hitting 229 with a 349 314 line. He hasn't hit a home run yet, he's got four runs batted in first walk he had a bunch of full counts six of them in his debut and ended up getting every one of those guys so he's got that now on the resume major league walk check to Nola pitch to Cronenworth that one's elevated two balls no strikes Elder's an interesting cat he was a Kid that grew up in the Dallas Fort Worth area played a lot of baseball. It was travel baseball, and he actually grew tired of the travel. He didn't want to be in the car that long. 2 0, 
three balls, no strikes. So he shut it down. <laughs> he picked up golf. So this is this is a little easier. It's more convenient. Get to hang around my family. Get on the boat on weekends. And when he got back to high school, he said, "I, I think I'm going to try baseball again." But the coach of the high school team said, "No, you pick one or the other." So he stuck with golf on a 3-0. And you may get a quick meeting here from Rick Granitz as he's walked two. In any event, year two of high school, a new coach shows up on the baseball team and he says, you can do both. You can do both. We like what you can do for us. Just do your PFPs. Be here when we need you to start. Then you can go golf. And had a terrific high school career, but nobody was impressed enough to offer him a scholarship. At the end of his high school career, he was going to an all-star showcase, and he called the University of Texas and said, come watch me. After one inning, the coach left. He said, I'm done. He goes to another all-star showcase a few days later, and Texas is back, and then they offered him. And the rest, obviously, is history. David Pierce loved him for the Longhorns, and now here he is on the mound, having walked two for Manny Machado, swinging at the first one. Swanson, all beasts, out at second base on a close play. And we may have our first review, as Jake Cornerworth said, I'm in there. Very slow roller hit to Dansby Swanson, and he got it to Albies. Cronenworth came up signaling safe. And we are going to have our first Sunday night baseball Diego's review. Yeah, and two things happened in this play. One, the ability of Cronenworth being that base runner. Secondary lead, aggressive as soon as contact was made. Let the speed take over. But Ozzy Albies has to know the speed of Cronenworth and also Machado know that there's only one play to be made there. If he can go out and stretch and be the first baseman instead of receiving it like a second baseman to turn two, you might have had a chance to get him out. Instead, this one's going to be reversed. After review, the call on the field is overturned. The runner is safe. San Diego will retain their challenge. Well, Melvin, as bench coach, said let's review it. They did. They'll keep their challenge. If you review, then you don't have the call overturned. You lose your challenge. And now the bases are loaded for Eric Hosmer, who is off to a red-hot start, hitting 394. The biggest challenge for Hosmer is so many of those hits have been on the ground, and that is exactly what Atlanta is hoping he does here. Hit it on the ground. First pitch, strike one to the veteran Hosmer. OPS plus 177. Three runs batted in. Shaded towards left is Duvall. A lot of room between the right fielder and center fielder. Way inside, nearly hit him. Showing him a four-seamer up and in. The other one now just cut in. You get the hitter to start looking in. You might get something to open up on a weak contact down and away. Let's see how he continues to approach Osma. Base is loaded. Pod race just underway. A couple of walks this inning from Bryce Elder making his second major league start. will pull it foul. Took just enough off, 86 miles per hour on that one. You see, early in this year, a lot of those ground balls that Hosmer hits have been finding the holes, right? Yeah. The, the, the Babbitt gods are in his favor so far. <laughs> and historically, April's been a very good month for him. Since he's come to San Diego in OPS in 18, it was 848, 750 in 19, 21. It was terrific. Hovered around 844 and a big opportunity here early. Next one swings at a high one and he fouls it back. One ball, two strikes. All we hear about Eddie is launch angle and elevating. And Eric Hosmer just hasn't gotten that memo and changed. He is true to who he is. Tapia, Lopez, Marte, 
All on this ground ball rate of 50 plus percent. Big pitch. Fouled it off the plate again. Well, he's a competitor. He's going to continue to battle and grind out at bats. It's been frustrating for him. He's already even changed the way he grips and where he holds the bat, holds it a lot lower, but right there just grinding out this at bat, knowing that he has to try to put it in play. 542 batting average on balls in play so far this year for Eric Hosmer. One ball, two strikes. Nola's at third, Cronenworth at second. This one on the infield, infield fly rule, and he is out. Hosmer unable to get the job done. We talked about Elder and his movements. The cutter at 90 just starts out in the middle of the plate, just comes in just enough to get Hosmer around it and ties him up. That brings up Jurickson Profar. He's got three home runs, nine RBI through 10 games. What did Profar do in the offseason? He went and worked in, quote, baseball country, the Dominican Republic, to be with Fernando Tatis Sr. Said I worked out, and they give me a lot of confidence that I can be myself. Also reunited with Bob Melvin, who we was with in Oakland. Strike one. Top of the zone, 89 mile an hour cutter. Good chance to learn a little bit about Bryce Elder, huh? Yeah, he's cool out there. He, you know, like Eduardo said, he works fast. Very composed out there so far here with the bases loaded. Nothing he throws is straight. It's either right to left movement or left to right. Braves shift with Swanson. And this one put up to Swanson and Elder who his college coach said, one thing I learned about him early on, he's not afraid. Bases were loaded, he walked too. He wasn't afraid, he gives up nothing. Say hi to everyone. Hi everybody. <laughs> what do you think about me getting a diamond, a diamond tooth? Over. I'm willing to bet my salary, I'm not gonna go all year without a hit. Here it is, but no. Hey, Ozzy Alves, next game, you got the mic. Joey Bada nominated me, I nominate you next. Well, he accepted the nomination, and Ozzy Alves will be wearing that microphone bottom, too. Looking forward to having that conversation. Darvish back on the mound in a game that's still 0-0, and it felt like it wasn't going to be the way that Elder walked to and had the bases loaded, and then got two of the hotter hitters early this season to pop out on the infield in Hosmer and Profar. Starts out with Travis Darno gets ahead 0-1. The catcher for the Braves. Pops one straight back up here. And into the seats. Played a long time. You won a lot of chips. You never played a home game on the West Coast. You nuts. Look at how nice it is. Yes. I what, <laughs> like a I'm like a, a mulligan. <laughs> never spring trained in, in Arizona either. Right. Always Florida. 0-2 oh, on the way to Darno from Darvish. Mm, boy, has he gone fire. Four strikeouts. The first five he has faced, you Darvish. I was curious to find out with the long top, bottom half of the inning, how you was going to come out. And he looked sharp. There's so much conviction behind every pitch. When you're feeling like that, it's a great feeling, especially having those shadows there, knowing that the hitters just can't pick it up right security blanket for a pitcher that may have explained perhaps why <laughs> Profar and Hosmer had the at-bats they did too Alex Dickerson up for the Braves first pitch just misses oh look at you a body language it's the second time already he's shown on the first pitch that body language saw it earlier against Matt Olson history with the Padres and Doug Eddings behind the plate came to a head last year during their big time struggles as that one is fouled off. Eddings was behind the plate and uh, several Padres were complaining about the strike zone and eventually they got thrown out. That was all part of their miserable slide. Over on ESPN2 right now, there's our guy, Christopher Mad Dog Russo. And look at Michael and A-Rod. You got, you, got you got an inning off now. That's on ESPN2, right? Head bobbing. Right. <laughs> Swing and a miss from Dickerson there. 
I take it it wasn't a yes or no question. It may very well have been. It doesn't matter. <laughs> very few people more passionate or knowledgeable about baseball than Chris Russo. Darvish one and two. He's got four strikeouts already. Here comes the next one. And that is not going to be a strikeout. Sky high on the infield. Hosmer is there to make the play. Well, you want to try to predict what this guy's going to throw. Here you go. Take a look at that list. How does the Supreme not hit the batter? It's like Supreme is getting in on the elbow. What is the Supreme? Good question. <laughs> it's only it's only thrown on Fridays. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once went to a restaurant and asked what is in the ingredients, and they came out and said kitchen magic. Is that what the Supreme is? It's it's baked in. Special of the day. <laughs> he gets ahead now of Adam Duvall. Adam Duvall was nothing short of sensational. Of course, he and Peterson and Soler came over the trade deadline and helped the Braves turn their season around last year. He ended up with 38 home runs. You're looking for his first in 2022. The 0 1. And the good news for you, Darvish, is every time he's started a hitter off 0 1, he struck them out. So, 0 2, you, it's your choice. I loved your reference to usage beginning of this telecast. Yeah, I stole it from you. <laughs> that was a behind yep. that was behind the curtain secret. Who's on first? Here it comes. This ball is driven to center field. Grisham is going back, and now he'll pull up and make the play. A 10-pitch inning for Darvish, who has been terrific. He's retired. Six of the seven, four strikeouts. Ozzy Albies spiked up and ready to go when we come back on Sunday Night Baseball. Yeah, the many faces of Ozzy Albies. Terrific personality, fun to be around. You go and get a chance to be down on the field before a game, and you just hang out next to that guy, and it is a blast. He has a microphone and an earpiece in now. Ozzy, thanks so much for doing this. So last week when, when the microphone was offered to you by Kike Hernandez, how did you find out about it? I was eating dinner, and uh, my phone started blowing up teammates and uh, Tomas, my VP thrower here with the Braves, he called me, he's like, hey, the nominated you to have the microphone next week, do you know that? I said, no, I don't know about anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, um, I look at my phone and I realized the video was going going around. So right. that's when I realized, okay, I, got, I have a microphone, so I'm gonna go in, have fun with it, with you guys. And you had Votto talking to you during game one, so you at least kind of knew what it was about. Yes, yes. When he asked me about his uh, diamond tooth and all that stuff. That's right. <laughs> I hope he gets it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to look over your left shoulder and see that big third baseman there in the shift? Oh, my shift? God. He's a beast. I know that every day. I give him a hard time every day we, we, when we in the clubhouse. Uh-oh. One and two to Beatty, give it a ride. The wind holds it though. Ozzy, did the wind shift? Because pregame, we were launching balls into the wind. They were going out. Yes, they were. The wind has changed a little bit. It's holding the ball right now. I thought Doobie one was gone. All right, so what's it like with the shadows as you start to move into a shift for Hassan Kim? Is that a big challenge, both offensively and defensively, or just um, more offensively? Yeah, it was a little rough to see the first inning. Me and Denzi was kind of chatting about it, but right now it's, right now it's getting better, way better. Ozzy Albies, the second baseman for the Atlanta Braves. Now on the shortstop side is Hassan Kim, the shortstop for the Padres up, and that's in there for strike one. So we've asked a bunch of Braves. I don't think I've asked you. How did your life change when you became a World Series champion? Oh, my God, the, the best thing ever. <laughs> the best thing in the world. We, as a little kid, I dreamed for that moment. I was always watching it on TV. But <laughs> that's what you just told me, focus on the game. <laughs> but... Um, 
it has been fun and crazy when everywhere everywhere I go, people tell me, hey, congrats on winning the World Series. It's like, it's crazy. And then last, last week we had the rings, it really hit me. I was really emotional. So you, you get your solitude when you're out on a boat fishing, right? That's where you get away. Ooh. And one, that one is over the head of Bohazi and Swanson, and Hassan Kim is aboard with a single. Come on, baby. Do a dance. Yes, Sundays, normally I'm on the, on the boat fishing. I'm not looking at my phone, I'm just enjoying a little off time with the family and friends. So what, what are you fishing for usually on Sundays? Everything. I love I love I love me some uh, yellowfin tuna, but I like the wagyu wagyu fish also. All right, so Abrams is up. Fast runner at first. And that one's high. So what are we thinking here, Ozzy, just defensively? Uh, right now, I'm ground ball to me, double play. Ending, end, 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 ending double play right here. That's all I'm thinking right now. Hit the ball to me. You realize that if that happens, then we don't have you much longer. 1-0. Oh. Nope, that's up the middle. That's going to get down. Kim will stop, and all of a sudden, it. a Padres. <laughs> Like they did in the first inning with two men on. Damage from the eight nine hitters, Kim and Abrams, and we go back to the top for Grisham. Yeah, I was hoping he had that ball to me, but he had a line drive single. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, in and out play would be better right there. <laughs> we can do it here. Now, what is that card that you're holding up? What does it tell you? It tells us where to be if we're shifting Grisham right here or we're staying straight up. But right now, we're staying straight up on him. That's the reason why I have the card with me. And then we would, uh, which sign and pitch we're going with. Well, Elder got out of it in the first after a couple of walks with two pop ups. And here's Grisham, who struck out looking his first time up. And that's. Inside is that part is that positioning dictated by the situation or just the hitter? It, it does situation also because right now if there was nobody on we play him the shift. Okay. But with people on on uh, on base, especially in runners scoring position, we play straight up. You want to get a double play. Come on, baby. Are you inclined at any point, Ozzy, to go and talk to your pitcher? Will you do that during a game? Yeah. I, I won't be I won't be scared to do that. That's that's something that probably needs some time to calm down, make better pitches. Why not give it to him? Yeah. Of course. Well, he's behind 2-0 oh now to Grisham, the leadoff hitter. One man down, Hassan Kim and CJ Abrams back-to-back -back singles. Come on, baby, come on. You're home now in Atlanta, always yes, crowded now. Yes, yes. It's amazing. 3 0, misses badly. Third walk of the game, bases loaded for the second consecutive inning. Here we go. Gonna give him a blow. Rick Brannis, the pitching coach, coming out to join Osby, Dansby, and Elder. This guy's shank is pretty good too, right? All the way, right? We're gonna roll him up right here. He's gonna be over aggressive, right? But he's gonna just gotta stay down a little bit, okay? For the most part. You gotta slide with the drum. Okay? You gotta let your pick me. Let's go ahead and just work on the second one, right? You look for me, let's go. Hey guys. Turned down the microphone a little bit so we wouldn't pick up exactly what Kranitz was saying. What was the message, Ozzy, you can share? You want 3 3? What's up, baby? How you doing? Bases full of Padres for Austin Nola. He walked his first time up. 
Ozzie on the shortstop side a second. I'm going to my middle. I got to get there. Elder looking for a ground ball. First pitch into right field. It's going to get fouled. And I'm going to get there and do me. Because we got to get him. Hey, he has a big lead again. And you can tell Austin Nola right there trying to hit the ball the other way. Yes, he was. You can see his swing. This approach everything. Matt Olson is way off first base. Here's the next one to know oh, how he got him, and that'll bring in a run. Bryce Elder does not have the control he had in that first game. And three walks and a hit batter makes it one nothing San Diego. Doing good? Anything you're seeing as a pitcher here on his control? He seems to have lost a little feel for that cutter, and he throws that a lot for strikes. And then the sinker and the changeup off of that works off of the cutter. So when one thing leads to another. When you lose command of your best pitch, and then you go to your secondary pitches, it's hard to throw them for strikes as well. Jake Cronenworth, the three-hole hitter. With Speedy Abrams at third. He's missing up with the cutter a lot, and that's his best pitch against lefties. And we've seen a steady diet of those inside the lefties for strikes. And it's a thin margin in there to get the call, and he's not getting them now. How about two high stress innings already? Yep. First one, 22 pitches. So far this inning, 18 of them. Next one to Cronenworth. Swing and a miss. Looked like he was swinging for a grand slam. Ozzy, notice that you do have that little hop right before the pitch crosses the plate. Is that something that you worked with, Ron Washington? Yes. We work on that for me to be on time for anything hit me because he's a big guy with creating your own hops. One and one. Here it comes to Ozzy. Backs up, flips to Dansby. To first, not in time. Good hustle down the line by Cornerworth, and it's 2 0 Padres. Right? What's up, man? Not hit hard. Yeah. He can fly. In between though. on the flip, anyways. He can fly. See the replay. Ozzy had to make a decision. Do I go and attack it or do I take a step back? He did the right thing, taking a step back. Cronenworth, as we heard Ozzy just say, just a little too fast. Cronenworth is a terrific multi sport athlete. The hockey player growing up, terrific speed. He's kind of a glue guy, and it's a fielder's choice first and third for Manny Machado. In the dirt, terrific block by Darno. And Elder's looking at his fingers. Fourth pitch of the game coming up for Bryce Elder. And then he yanks that foul. Oh. Went into the seats hard. Ozzy. Yes. How's the experience with the earpiece? Oh, it's great. It's great. It's awesome. You can play with this every day if you want to do science. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, one strike. Grisham is at third. Cornerworth at oh. first. Deep Stay to ball. left field. Back goes Ozuna, Stay and ball. he is there in front of the track. Ozzy, we got Phillies and Brewers next week. Who are you nominating? Yeah, I appreciate Kike Hernandez nominating me. I'm not nominating Bryce Harper for the next Sunday night game baseball. Order of Bryce is at dinner. His phone's about to blow up. Fozzie, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. See you guys. Very good to have the second baseman of the Braves. Fozzie Alves.
It's impressive. Impressive kid. Right well, it, was, it was fading away, though. Back here at San Diego, Padres manager Bob Melvin. And Bob, it's always a special challenge when you face a pitcher you haven't seen before, like Bryce Elder. How have you guys handled that? I think pretty well. I mean, we, we you know, the plan today was make him throw some pitches and see what he's got. You know, we put some pressure on the first couple innings, broke through that inning, so hopefully that trend continues. What are you seeing in you, Darvish, so far today? Good fastball again. It's a mix of pitches that, that gets him going where he wants to go, but I think his fastball in this season, at least early on, has been really good, and you see him using it here. Bob, thanks. Back to you. Now, Buster, thank you. He started Eddie Rosario off with a cutter. So 8 9. Rosario and Swanson haven't hit yet. Padres jump out to a 2 0 lead. Next one here, and Eddie sends that to the seats. You know, to Bob Melvin's point, you Darvish has seven swings and misses. Four of them off of that fastball. So if you're missing bats with your fastball, that's going to give you confidence out there to keep throwing it. There's a good look at the usage. And again, Albies, a terrific peek behind the curtain on the communication that goes on between middle infielders. We've got a lot of inside baseball there with all the action that was on the bases between Ozzy and Dansby and the shifts. Rosario hammers that one to right, going back is Beatty, still going back, and he's there to make the catch on the track. He got a good read on it, didn't have to turn around and sprint, but he kept backing up, and Rosario's early season struggles continue. Next Sunday night, well, you heard it, Bryce Harper, it's yours if you want it. Brewers and Phillies finishing up a three-game set at Citizens Bank Park. It's available on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. Our coverage starts at 5.30 Eastern time on ESPN on the app with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. A lot of teams, Brewers and Phillies as well, trying to get their footing. A lot of four and five, five and five teams to start the season. And Swanson looks at a ball outside. You know, think about it for Bob Melvin and every other manager, like this is final week of spring training in a sense. You know what I mean? Because of the shortened spring. Absolutely. The starting pitching is not stretched out. The rosters are going to be reduced come when the calendar turns to May. Some teams with 15 or 16 pitchers on the roster, that's right. going to go down. Starting pitchers are now, this you know, second time around, are up to almost 100 pitches. So the steadying hand of Bob Melvin, who forever was with the A's and Billy Bean, and obviously has a track record where he's been and the success he's had as Swanson swings and misses. Oakland was about to go into kind of a rebuild. Chapman leaves, Olsen leaves. The relationship with Billy being there had been that conversation. Maybe both of them would end up in New York at City Field. And then Billy wasn't the answer there. So it was really the ownership of the A's and Bean who suggested, you know, if there's an opportunity, strike three, Darvish picks up another strike. And you, Darvish, now with five punch outs. But back to Melvin, if there's an opportunity, you should go for it. Like we're looking out for your best interest. Which speaks, I can't imagine, to the relationship Billy Bean has with Bob Melvin and the respect he has. It does, ultimate respect amongst them. And look, the years that Bob Melvin put into Oakland, and he had to adjust as a manager, understanding how to use the analytics that yeah. they were giving him and using it with matchups, I think played to his success, and he understood that. And because of that, that mutual respect gave him an opening to, to pursue others. The shadows are gone now, so as Albies bats for the second time, Darvish gets ahead 0-1, and, and that didn't look like a comfortable swing from Ozzy Albies. And again, he started and so far just thrown Ozzy off-speed after off-speed. He threw him a fastball, but it was out of the zone. Just a show-me pitch. A one, and how about it? The only guy on that side is Manny Machado. That back-to-back 10-pitch innings for you, Darvish. Back to back, one, two, three innings. Back in San Diego, Brian Sitker, what are you seeing in your at bats against you, Darvish, early? Well, he's kind of mixing it, keeping it away from the middle, that's for sure. So um, just having a rough time getting anything going right now. 
So you know there's a theory in baseball called the championship hangover. Uh, the teams that win a championship the following year can struggle sometimes. What do you see in your guys this first year after your championship? Um, I, I don't notice that. I just think, well, I think actually we're doing a lot better than we have the last couple of years at this time of the year. So um, if anything, we've we've flipped the, than what we normally are right now. So um, I, I don't I don't know that there's you know I haven't felt that yet. Okay. Sid, thanks. Back to you. Now, Buster, thank you. Yeah, they, they've had some some struggles to start seasons, including oh. last year. And Elder picks up the strike there on Eric Hosmer, who is batting. It's guys, it's almost like we're watching two different games. Like Darvish goes out there and the inning half inning takes four minutes, and then Elder has come out twice and it's taken 20 minutes. And right on theme too, right? Four seam fastballs. Darvish throwing hard and throwing well. Oh, there's a good. One, two, three to Eric Hosmer, who strikes out. Perhaps Elder settles a little bit here with Hosmer going down. Well, the Braves basically spent the entire first week celebrating. And as Brian Snitker has said recently, I'm kind of looking forward to the dull routine of baseball, which you understand what that means to him. It means let's just play baseball. Let's get on the road. Let's, let's kind of get out of here. Part of the reason that they're celebrating and how they celebrate is with this thing this is the world series ring it's got 750 diamonds on it every one of them kind of tells a story as the first pitch is in there for a strike the other part about this unique ring is that it actually opens up and when you open it up and i certainly don't want to break it given its, its value you you knew which way it opened but inside you can't see it it actually has lights that operate there are lights in there oh i see it it illuminates. It's impressive. That's Truist Park. There were rubies in there for every home run that they hit during the World Series. There's a whole bunch of tributes to Jock Peterson through this ring, including the beginning of his quote, we are those, and you can't say it or write it, but everybody on the team knew exactly what he was saying when he said those words. There's an ode to his pearl necklace down the right side, there's a pearl on the ring. And of course, Jock Peterson wore the pearl necklace last year. Brian Snicker tells an unbelievable story about the ring, which he doesn't wear, because when he got his ring and did wear it, he bruised his finger from shaking everybody's hand so often with it. I mean, here, you've had many rings. How different is this than the five that you have? There is no excess room at all for any more bling, right? I mean, it is everywhere. And Let's thank Eric Young as he said Eduardo or has he he actually mentions my name Eduardo Souvenir City Souvenir. is what I usually say after every home run. This right here is the biggest home run of his life yeah. right here this ring. And you heard Aussie I mean they all look you know it five times over but they all say that like this is what you dream about when you're six years old. And you could be Eric Young and not get it for so many years. You could be Austin Riley and get it in year two or three of your major league career. And you can milk it for the rest of your career. Trust me. I mean, <laughs> 20 years from now, there'll be an anniversary. There's an anniversary after 10. Right. You can have an anniversary whenever you want. Here, how's that ring? Now, some diamonds on that ring. That's one of yours. 96, 99. You can see she's starting to fill it up a little bit more <laughs> as we go on. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like this one, though. Wow. Yeah. That is loaded, that Braves ring. Matt Beatty. Yeah, you go online and you can read all about the ring, and there are different estimates as to how much something like that cost. Reportedly around $50,000 of value in the World Series ring. So we thank EY for that. Ozzy Albies for coming on with us. And the Atlanta Braves now trying to do what the Yankees last did. 99 2000 and back up a World Series championship with a World Series championship. You know, one last point on the ring it's not just the players and coaches, people in the organization, scouts, front office personnel, a lot of people that you wouldn't think behind the scenes get, get to share in that. And to me, that might be the best part. And they took care of all those people, the Atlanta Braves uh, front office did. And I, and I love that, that they were able to enjoy it and get their rings as well. Beatty, ground ball right back to Elder. Well, there you go. He just did his best, Hugh Darvish. He punches out Hosmer, Profar, 
and a ground ball from Beatty. Saturday Night Baseball on ESPN, our telecast presented by Taco Bell. That ring was really special. Bring your friends to the one spot with all of your favorite free MLB games. Play the hits with Beat the Streak, Quick Pick, and more. Visit MLB.com slash play and download MLB Play Today. Here's Matt Olson who will not receive one of those rings. And there's a bunch of tributes to the great Hank Aaron. Hammer and Hank, there were 44 emerald cut diamonds of course, to honor Hank. 755 diamonds to be exact. A significant number in the career of Henry Aaron. So the Braves tied their history with their World Series. First title since 95. Darvish behind Olsen, 1-0. Oh. One ball, one strike. about Olsen and how he found out he was offered the eight years and 168 million from Braves. He was in an airplane and his agent told him to keep his phone on because they were ready to make him an offer. And when he got the text in the airplane, and yeah, there are certain airplanes you can get texts in. That ball is driven and that's another hit for Olsen. Then he steps on first, ball ricochets and Profar picks it up. Matt Olsen two for two and what a start to the season. For Matty O. What Ol Olsen right here. Breaking pitch, just waits for it, lets it get deep, and keeps it fair the opposite way. Hands stay up, quiet on the way back, almost like a golfer when he understands where that club head is. Matt Olsen understands exactly where the barrel is and gets it by the infield into left field for the double. Matt Olson was hitting 412 when the night began. He's got a single and a double and sets it up for Austin Riley. A little more on that pitch from Darvish to get ahead 0195. So he gets that text up there and he's like blown away by the offer because he had built a house in Atlanta with his wife Nicole and he jokingly said, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get the mail. He finds out he's going there. He's signing an eight-year deal. And he asked, is it guaranteed? <laughs> which of course all the money in baseball is guaranteed. Thanks Marvin Miller. What a life. And here's Riley. No balls one strike. Ouch got him on that left hand. That's a terrible place to get hit by a pitch. So many bones inside that hand of his. Let's hope Austin Riley's okay. Again, one thing that you, Darvish, had to do today to be effective is you better throw inside. It makes that breaking pitch a lot better for hitters. Diving out over the plate, probably still not being able to see the ball well. He hits it fair and squares the ball. Ricochets and goes towards. Padres dugout. I see so many hitters nowadays that have a big pad in their their batting gloves, almost like a cricket player. Certainly could have used one there. You no, know, it almost looked like I got him on the side, thankfully, and not the top. So he goes down to first, and now Marcel Ozuna with Olsen at second, sixth multi-hit game of the year for Matt Olson. Dirt ball one back to back base runners after Darvish retired nine of the first ten he had faced. Those six pitches that he faced Ozuna with last time, there were two fastballs, two sinkers, curve on a slider. Started him off with off speed pitch here. Most hard hit balls in baseball this season. Ozuna coming into the day holds on that one two and oh. Go 
ballpark. It's got a little quiet here after Darvish was so strong for the first three innings. Trying to change it up second time around the lineup. No pitch calm here. You see the traditional signals being called. 2 0 straight up. On the infield, Abrams makes the play. Meet Ultimate Hybrid, advanced ceramic and wax technology. The best of both worlds, but better. Only from mothers. And Travis Darno, the catcher, who hit that big World Series home run last year, came off his bat at 112. Remember, he was just coming back off that thumb injury and got healthy right at the end of the World Series. Came off grave, and it was the second hardest hit ball in the 21 postseason. Here he is with two on. Run from Darvish, ball one down. Communication there between Doug Adings talking to Roberto Ortiz, the second base umpire. Abrams kind of has to peek around Darvish to see what's going on. Darno gets jammed and he fouls it off. So I was under the impression Darvish did use pitch comp. No. Well, after the last outing, I think he wanted to switch it up a little bit, right? Could be. A little whirly bird swing, Darno, catcher to catcher. Donks Nola right on the head. Yeah, it is curious. Bob Melvin told us before the game that the, he did. He was in favor of using the technology. Obviously, they're not doing it here. And it's when the game really slows down with a man on second base. Darno, shallow right. Haiti, late read on it, but he's there to make the play. Yeah, look, the people who have designed pitch comp, really smart people, we got a chance to speak with them. They implied, like, you're not going to hack this thing. But the start did, did reek of, like, somebody's eavesdropping on pitch comp. Well, remember a couple years ago when <laughs> when Darvish was with the Dodgers where they struggled, where he struggled and he thought maybe they had the signs on him. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we see one of the best teams that he faced out picking up pitches. He ends up struggling, uh, struggling with them as well. Uh, speed misses high. You know, you you were really good at this in your career, Eduardo. But the majority of pitchers that tip pitches come from the windup, as opposed to the stretch, because there's less moving parts in the stress in the stretch. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. And and the reason is because when they come set. Like you, Darvish could. It could. His hands could be further away from his body on a breaking pitch, or they could be closer to his body on the fastball. They're, the angle could be different, also of the glove. The wiggle once he puts the ball in the glove, he could wiggle on the fastball and maybe not on the slider or change it. It all depends who the pitcher is. But I sometimes prayed for the hitter in front of me to actually get on because I had him from the stretch and not the windup. So you're saying more from where the glove comes set is what, what you keyed on. And sometimes how high the glove goes on the way up to then come down to get set. One ball, one strike. Dickerson in there. One ball, two strikes. Well, I'll defer to you because I tipped my pitches and it was mostly from the windup. But certainly that makes sense. And, you know, the, the positioning of the glove and when the pitcher gets the grip is the key. You know, he's getting the sign now. Right. And you have to change the way you're going to hold the baseball, whether it's a splitter or a slider or a curveball or a fastball. So the minute he goes into the glove, the transition's made. And that's usually where you where the read comes or where the tip comes. Way outside, overthrew it, slipped out of his fingers as he looked down at his right hand. 
And there are certain pitchers in the big leagues that as soon as they bring up the leg, the leg kick comes up, the hands come up first, then the leg kick com comes, and it's a fastball. And when they keep the glove down and hands down, that's when it's a changeup. It's interesting. And there are still pitchers in this league that still do that. Yeah, you load up, definitely. Yeah, certain pitchers, that's more of a telegraph when you're already on your way to home plate, plate in your delivery, as opposed to a discernible tip before the pitch. 2-2 two, two on the ground, Hosmer. Flips to Darvish, she gets out of it. They will strand two, first time that the Braves were able to elevate the baseball. We'll talk about Tatis and Acuna when we come back. type player right there. He's gonna be the face of this game very, very soon. Now both of those players do back this season as we settle in for the Padres home half of the fourth. We got updates pre-game from both managers. Buster only will join us in a second here to talk about both Acuna and Tatis. What did we learn, Buster? Ronald Acuna Jr. is mere weeks away. He's going to start a minor league rehab assignment on Tuesday, and then he'll move up to Gwinnett, perhaps the following week on the 26th. And then the week after that could be the week that he winds up uh, being activated in the big leagues. It's possible in a series that they have in New York against the Mets. At this moment, it seems more likely it's going to be on May 6th, but he's very close. Fernando Tatis Jr., however, his return may be months away. So what we learned before the game, of course, he suffered that fracture during the offseason on his wrist, and Bob Melvin told us that needs to heal. Yeah. They ta they're talking about possibly mid-June, but it may also be early July before he returns to the, the uh, lineup. Long way away for Tatis. Great news on Acuna. Tatis was active, though, pre-game. You can see that left wrist protected. But he's out there playing another sport that he's great at and enjoys soccer with a couple of his teammates showing some move. Oh uh -oh. boy, now that that we don't want to see. But he did push up off of both hands there. He didn't really know that he had done any damage to it until he started to ramp up his baseball activity in the offseason. As Abrams steps in, strike one. So Hassan Kim has reached base twice. Single to scored in the second and now on with a walk. You Darvish did not get a swing and miss in the last half inning. That conversation you guys had because it really felt like you know you were convicted in your belief about guys being able to steal pitches and kind of learn something there. It, yeah, absolutely did. And Eduardo's one of the best uh, best in the business at that, that's for sure. On here from Abrams who can fly. Riley got him. Great play by Austin Riley, who barehanded it and was able to cut down Abrams. He does advance Hassan Kim to second. Not an easy play. Well, that's an excellent play by Austin Riley, who we hear so much about his defense. And he continues to just show his range, not only to laterally, but right here coming in, recognizing as soon as CJ squared up to be able to just do the transition and throw off that right foot. Perfect throw over to Matt Olson. So the sacrifice has a runner in scoring position, and here's Trent Grisham. Strike out and a walk got stranded at third base. Get credit for a sacrifice there, but that looked like more like he was he's trying to beat that out, going for a, for a hit. Yeah, no doubt. And you look at what Riley at third base has been able to do defensively, the more he's worked with Ron Washington, yeah. the better he gets. You know, Chipper Jones always said it, this guy's one of the best defensive third basemen that he had seen coming up through the organization. And Ron Washington has continued to work and work with him. And the numbers right there show it. 
will be about the outs above average for Riley. He made a terrific short hop pick yesterday and in talking with Washington before the game. Do you go over and remind him like that's why you work? And he said, no, no, no. He came off the field and told me that's why we do what we do. Thank Ron Washington. And it is a daily routine that the infielders go through. Two balls and a strike. This is pregame with Wash and Riley. That's a short hop. He made the exact play yesterday. That's every infielder and also Marcelo Zuna has joined the party with the infielders. Yeah, the structure and the routine daily really pays dividends. That one runs a little high and Elder's control issues for the night Seems to be continuing here. Three balls and a strike. I asked Washington who the, who the greatest pupil was as far as what you had to do the most. And he, I mean, the list is long, but he said Miguel Tejada. Miguel Tejada would make all the great plays. It was the routine ones, and we got him to a place where he made them all. That's in there for a strike, three and two. That's interesting because I thought he would have said Marcus Simeon because Simeon, when he came to the league, really struggled. Yep. Remember, uh, defensively, and then all of a sudden they brought in Ron Washington, and it just clicked. And the relationship he has with Ozzie Albies, he said, I have that because remember when I came over here, Albies was hurt. We were together all the time. Just misses inside off the plate. Got a walk here for Elder. Predict who's going to dominate the 2022 season. You could win $100,000 worth of Bitcoin or cash with MLB season pick them presented by FTX. View rules and enter at MLB.com slash season pick them. I'm really surprised right now that there is no activity in the bullpen for the Atlanta Braves. Two high stress innings in the first two innings, over 20 pitches in each of those. A quick bottom half of the third, but right now, it's that time to maybe just start getting those guys loose. Maybe not hot, but at least start playing a little soft toss out there. Yeah, his Opening game, eight three ball counts. He didn't walk anybody. Tonight, five of them, and all have resulted in walks. He also has a hit batter. He got the check swing call for a strike, and there's another strike. So ahead of Austin, Nola 0 and 2. The interesting, Coney, where this ends up is this that game where you say, you know what, he kept us in it because he didn't have his best stuff. Or did the Padres tack on to a 2 0 lead? Stuff wise it's it's been a bit of a slog for him just two swings and misses on all of his pitches. Oh two on the ground Swanson will go to third get the lead runner there and that'll be it. I'm kind of surprised that he did not go to second base with this. You have Austin Nola who's a catcher not a fast runner. I think Ozzy's wondering the same thing. Why did he not just come to second base and then we have a chance for two. We'll look at the hide home and you tell us from home. For me right here, if you know the runner, Nola being the catcher, maybe you have a chance for two. Now Cronenworth. Swing and a miss. Boy, Jake is swinging out of his shoes. We saw that with Luke Voigt yesterday, who's Getting the day off, Cornerworth has swung and missed badly at a couple. Boyd did that all day yesterday. Elvin said he feels like Luke, who's so good at going the other way, taking walks, was just trying to make a big time impression. He gets the night off. 0 1 to Cronenworth. This one on the ground. Albies, Olsen. That'll do it again. Elder pitches out of trouble. Welcome back. Another fascinating week when it comes to Major League Baseball. Best thing we saw on these diamonds and perhaps others after this. Welcome back, everyone. You see the Western Metal Supply Company building down the left field line. 
more famous sites here. And speaking of sites, there were so many great baseball moments. In fact, every week there's a million of them. We, we are asked to come up with the best thing you saw each week. Like I keep saying, we should have a top 10 list. Maybe show visually the top three, but we could have a top 10 list. So we'll go over the best things we saw this week. And it's really in baseball, not just Major League Baseball. It's in baseball. We'll put Eddie on the, uh, in the on-deck circle. He'll come up first as Darvish fires the first pitch to ball for ball one. One and know. Out of play. This week, of course, was significant for Major League Baseball. Yeah, it was, no doubt. You know, 75 years, that number right there, Jackie Robinson. Not only did the Major League Baseball players wear it, they wore it proud, but it was the Dodger blue behind every uniform, chest protector, and it creates the conversation for that young fan mm -hmm. that you're that's watching the game asking his father, grandfather, grandmother, friend, yep. why? Why the 42? That's that's how you keep that memory alive. And, and I applaud everyone that wore the uniform in Major League Baseball for making sure that number 42 is always, always talked about year in and year out. Two balls, two strikes. Good pitch from Darvish. Now the ceremony in Times Square, where 42nd and Broadway for the weekend was renamed Jackie Robinson Way. I agree with you, though, Eddie. The fact that 42 hangs in every ballpark, just think about the generations of fans that walk through. And at some point, you look around, you see retired numbers, and you see 42 up there, and it just leads to the question, who was 42? And the story can be told over and over, and everybody will have their own spin on exactly the significance of 42. Great week, great job by Major League Baseball, celebrating Jackie Robinson 75 years later. Strikeout six, by the way, for you, Darvish. All right, Cody, how about you? Well, I'm going to have to double up from last week. You know, everybody thought Clayton Kershaw's game was the one that everybody wanted to bellyache about. But how about Roki Sasaki? Back-to-back -back games. He went eight perfect game innings this time with 14 strikeouts. He threw a perfect game in his last start with 19 strikeouts, including 13 consecutive. What about a follow-up? And then his coach yanked him. The manager took him out of the game after eight innings. The perfect game, and he gets taken out after eight. Didn't we see that in Major League Baseball at seven? Yeah. So that seven with Kershaw. Round out there to first by Eddie Rosario. What about you, Carl? I just can't wait for you to keep an eye on that for the next start. We'll, we'll revisit that next week. I thought this was an amazing thing that I saw. It comes from a youth league baseball and uh, little boys up at the plate. And you can hear the people in the background saying, choke up, choke up, Avery, choke up, Avery. And to see what the catcher does to Avery is exactly what you hope every boy or girl playing baseball or softball would do. We'll show it to you in just a second. Here's Swanson with two down. Ball one. Oh, come on, Avery. So I love that. You can hear mom say, come on, Avery. And then everybody's saying, choke up, choke up. So the catcher helps him choke up on the bat. The next pitch, he puts it in play. The catcher helping the opponent was great. How about mom saying, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, it's great. Good on the catcher. And I'll tell you one thing about catcher and his ability to multitask. You don't think he's hearing those parents saying, choke up, Avery. And Avery's not choking up. So he said, I'll help you. I'll show you what that what that means. <laughs> we'll get to Buster's perhaps in the next half inning, but again, we could have a top hundred list of the great things you see in the world of baseball each week. Just misses inside. Darvish behind three and oh. You had a future batting coach there, no, no doubt, right? Right. See that kid in the big leagues. And boom, result. Reno to Dansby. Right 
right down the middle. All right, Buster, go ahead. How about the amazing start of the Guardian, Stephen Kwan, who saw 116 pitches before he swung and missed, a 541 on base percentage. I texted Terry Francona, manager of the Guardians, asked for a comp. He said, well, given his size, ability to put contact in play, how about each row's little brother? Yeah. Swanson, no contact there, three and two. Imagine when Kwan was able to accomplish as a hitter, making contact as often as he did without swinging and missing one time. That was unbelievable. Um, one of the, I think one of the swings, he thought that he had broken the streak, yet it was called on the pitch, not on the swing against the Reds. Just, and it was hard hit contact also. How would Kwan do against you tonight? Darvish, 11 swings and misses. Dansby does foul that off. Is it Inglewood? Humper Dink? Quando, Quando, Quando? Hey! <laughs> Love that song. When, when, when? When was the streak going to end? Ended at 116. Did not expect an Inglebird Humber Dink reference, reference tonight. tonight. <laughs> yes. That one caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> but he's on your playlist, isn't he? I like it, though. <laughs> two down, fifth inning. Two nothing Padres. 3 2 to Dansby. Swing and a miss. Hugh Darvish has got a dozen swings and misses, and he has completely frustrated the Atlanta Brave hitters tonight. Bottom five with Manny Machado coming up. Now, if you like pitching, you can get up in that seat and start moving around here because Darvish, back to his old tricks, two more strikeouts, seven in the game and we just saw the first time Darvish had fallen behind 3-0 and come back to strike the batter out. He had five of those last year. This was his first as Manny Machado steps in and now ahead 2-0. and Spencer Strider, good buddy of Bryce Elder is up in the bullpen. He of the 100 plus mile an hour fastball. That's in there for a strike. So it looked a little different if Strider follows Elder. Get that mustache that he started growing when he was in high school. Some have the ability to do that as Manny sends this skyward. Albies, Olsen, Olsen. Well, that's another one. Like Brett Phillips, who's joining the K-Rod cast right now over on ESPN2. His interaction with the girl who was dealing with cancer and then the note and then the bracelet and the home run, like, that's what I mean. One best thing you saw it doesn't do it justice. Like, that. that's on the top of every list, you know? I'm glad that he's on ESPN2. He is so good for baseball, Brett Phillips. And such a better player. He's in so much better shape. I mean, he's really developed as a baseball player. Oh, he leaned out um, big time. When I saw him in Port Charlotte during spring training, I was like, dude, what'd you do? He said, yeah. I finally ate right. Yeah. Worked out, did everything I needed to do to, to make this team. I was like, dude, you're on the team. Hey, you never know. And I love that. It's a pretty good designated pitcher, too. Had a nice outing the other day, making a heck of a play over <laughs> off Great the mound. Play, yes. <laughs> Yeah, they had a shift on. There was a pop up down the third base foul territory line, and he went over, slid, and made the play. But his airplane run in the postseason. I think the common theme, Carl, and you, you know, as you mentioned, it's the human side of it. So it's getting to see these players' personality, and that's what we we're micing them up here on Sunday Night Baseball, and. K Rod and some of the players on there. It's just about for these players to, to show off their their personal side that the fans want to see. Yep. Two balls, two strikes. Hosmer has struck out once and he flew out to the shortstop. You think about the way this Padre team has been built. So many of the players have been acquired by a trade, and Eric Hosmer's name is always, always in trade talks fouled off the plate and perhaps for the first time now Eddie with Bob Melvin here who's a big supporter of Hosmer the voice that he has in the clubhouse as a player obviously feels like maybe they're just going to settle in. 
Yeah, like maybe they are, and that's the thing, and it's about getting consistency. And so far with Eric, getting off to this good start really helps. Really helps with him. And, you know, he's such a competitor. He goes out there. He's already won a World Series championship. And most importantly with him, you see his stance, you see his hands where they go. He starts off okay going towards the umpire, but he's trying to get rid of it coming up and back and hiding from the pitcher. And what I mean by that is you want to have quiet hands. It's okay to load and go back with your hands, but they have to be visible to the pitcher where the ball's coming from. Watch from this angle. Look how the, high, the hands hide behind the body. Now it's a longer trajectory to be able to get to that pitch. And that's one of the things that they've been working on. That's once elevated into right, coming hard, sliding, and unable to make the play is Rosario. A hard line drive off the bat of Hosmer, and he's on first. And this is a perfect example, 3-2. Decides to go with an off-speed pitch at 82 miles per hour. You get the exit velocity at 107.9, but he struggles with that fastball. This was a breaking pitch. Has time for the hands to get out and hit it out in front. And this is the potential that Eric Hosmer still has at the age of 32. If he were to be quieter with the hands, with the fastball, it would be scary. He'd be able to lift the ball consistently, and that's what they've been trying for him to do for a lot of his career. Elder will leave with 89 pitches, one out in the fifth inning. It was a battle. Spencer Strider coming in next. Stream out of market regular season games live or on demand. Plus MLB big inning and select pregame and postgame coverage. Blackout and other restrictions will apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Ryder. Take a look at the numbers from Bryce Elder. Four and a third. This was a struggle, but I gotta believe, Coney, that Kranitz and the rest of the staff and Elder learned a lot tonight, right? This is a teachable game for him. It was a nice little comeback because it looked like he was on the on the ropes there for a, a couple of innings and then he finished up, still got almost 90 pitches out of it. Still only two runs on the board. He's gonna look for a little help from Spencer Strider here who Throws absolute fuzz, about 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Speaking of 100, that was the hardest hit ball of the game off the bat of Hosmer, 108. Here's Strider, first pitch on the ground. Olsen, nifty pick. He goes to Swanson, covering Strider. One pitch, double play. Boy, that is the Ron Washington school of taking that short hops. Olsen charged it, got it, fired, and give a pat on the back to Strider for getting over there. Yeah. Old Glover. Go Glover, you get it. Throw it over to Swanson. Back over, great pick at first. He threw me three splitters. Se ve un poquito, no se ve mucho. Me tiró tres. Pero no se ve bien bien, oíste, por la sombra. Para que sepa. El aire. Eh, please. A mí, a mí, a mí. Just so you know, right there, Ozzy letting him know. He threw me three splitties, and you can't see it well because of the shadows. And he continues to throw him off speed pitches. And he's been off balance. Oh, it's tough to see. I, again, right now, I think it's the best that Ozzy has been able to go with the approach, but he's crushed the fastball so far in the first three games in this, of the series. Good view of the new batter's eye in the background here in San Diego. Another breaking pitch misses. So you think about Albies, and he's been one of the great second basemen since his arrival, really. The power numbers are there. He had career highs and homers and runs and RBIs last year. And you look at the money that's being thrown around to some of the great players, which he is. And you remember, he signed a five-year $35 million extension in 2019, which Buster, you know, the one reason you never comment, I think, on people and their salaries and what they agree to or don't agree to is you never know the circumstances that they're dealing with and why they may say yes or no to an offer. 
That's exactly right. You see Ozzy's great personality. Well, he told me that personality was the same as his father's. Line drive, and he's out. What He told me that his father was the one who really fed his passion for baseball. He would take him to the games. He said he was like a brother for Ozzy. Well, a few weeks after Ozzy signed professionally for $350,000 in his signing bonus, his father passed away because of a heart attack. And at that point, Ozzy told me today, he told his mother that his goal for her was he did not want to ever, ever have to work again. So he signed that signing bonus then. He suffered a big in elbow injury when he was in the minor leagues, came back from that, and then Carl signed that $35 million deal, helped take care of his family. Yeah. And you've both been around players, but you just never know the circumstances when you look at it on the surface, you're like, wow, he's he's just worth so much more than that. And yet you realize he's taking care of things that he promised his mom or his dad he would take care of. And there'll be another contract for him. There will. He's 25 years of age. And the thing that when we were having a conversation with him today that stood out is he, he's like, I play baseball. I play. I don't work baseball. I play baseball. And 35 million from where he's from and in in his circumstances, it's like I get paid for it. Olsen down the line with Carey towards the pole, and it just goes foul. I'll be honest, when, when you're sitting here in the stands yesterday watching a baseball game and seeing guys like Albies and Olsen and everyone else out there, and you realize, my God. These guys get to do something they've wanted to do since they were kids. They get paid a lot of money for it. They're on these fields. You're looking at names like Cano as Olsen hits one on the ground and other tremendous second baseman that Ozzy Albies is in the conversation with. But yeah, Eddie, his, his perspective is spot on. I play a game I love. I travel the way I do. I stay in hotels. I'm doing what I want to do. And we laugh, we kind of like with 35 million dollars <laughs> not 35 cents and you know I remember when he signed the deal a lot of people were all over his agent David meter what why are you doing this it's like it's what my player wants it's what he needs you know it's not about just taking the deal and being able to cash in on it he knew there was probably more for him Riley center field and loud Grisham back he stops and the park holds another one. By a handful of 10 pitch innings for Darvish, he gets through that in just nine. You is rolling, so are the Padres. Only five hits in the game. It's 2 0 San Diego. To the bottom of the sixth, we go. Hugh Darvish has retired nine straight, and it started with a real quick first inning where he struck out three of the four he faced. He gave up a hit to Matt Olson. Has a strikeout in four of the six innings that he's been on the mound. He's got a seven strikeout piece, and everybody that's out there on the hill is enjoying what you Darvish is doing tonight. He's matching nearly what he did in his first start. We are back with Spencer. Strider on the mound, 99 miles an hour and a miss, only a second pitch. The first one resulted in an inning ending double play. See that mustache on Strider's face? He told us last night he's been growing that since he was in high school. Apparently, he's been compared with Dylan Cease, so as Buster had tweeted out earlier, and he told us last night he's considering sending Dylan a cease and desist order not to have the same <laughs> mustache. Misses again there, 3 0. We're going to see a Raleigh Fingers mustache soon, I wonder. Keep it going. Break out the wax. He keeps doing what he's doing. Why not? Uh, you, you can't look at Spencer Strider and not think about what Hunter Green did last night. 39 pitches of 100 miles an hour or more, which is a Major League Baseball record. This one is playable. Swanson looks at Ozuna and says, uh, it's yours. And Marcel is there for the out.
As electric vehicle driving becomes quieter, so do our tires. Electrified Hanguk. Hanguk Tire. So for Green and for a guy like Strider Coney, he throws that four-seam fastball about 68% of the time. He's been working on his slider and his changeup. And they make up the other 32%, 25 of which he throws a slider on. The hitters will all tell you, you know this is a pitcher. The feedback is I'll, I'll hit, I'll eventually figure out the fastball, right? Absolutely, especially with Everybody throwing harder nowadays. Sooner or later, the hitters are going to catch up. Popped up, and an easy one for Albies. So how difficult for somebody that made a living literally getting through Little League, high school, Clemson, throwing hard, and it's worked. You know, it's almost like i gotta, I got to get a new trick in my bag. Like that development, how, how difficult is that, especially later in your pitching career? really hard that's why you know the old notion of don't teach kids how to throw curveballs well to a certain extent at some point yes yeah. but then no I mean if, if you don't learn how to learn how to spin the ball at a, you know when you're in a teenage when you're in your teenage years then it's really hard to learn it properly once you're you playing get, catch up right yes you're playing catch up once you get older it's, it's almost impossible to learn how to really spin a baseball and get elite kind of curve or break or shape to your breaking stuff I'll still take my chances if I have 99 in my back pocket what was your what was your kind of when did you learn I mean I know that Laredo is the famous but when did you go with the spin I learned from my dad at a young age when I was 12 years old he'd take me in the backyard and teach me how to do it properly but he wouldn't let me throw it in the game until I learned how to do it properly until I learned the, pro the right technique and how to do it and then when he let me throw it in the game it was just a few times here and there he didn't let me start snapping it off one after another. Well, we just went triple dig right there from Strider and a hundo, and here comes the next one. That missed away at 98, so we took something off. That's what was impressive about Hunter Green that you mentioned before with yeah. the Reds. Is he's got a, an elite slider to go with it, too, and the, the pitch design nowadays is to be just spectacular. It's a separator. These pitches come in on the same tunnel, looking, looking alike. So what did you do to get Eduardo out? You faced him, what, once? Did you once? I, Three times. I remember you stepping in the box. Yeah, I think you got me once or a double or something. I think you, you, you handled me pretty good because I was tipping my pitches and he knew what I was throwing. So. <laughs> From the stretch. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, wait a second. Oh, stay in the ballpark. Stay in. Almost. That's Yardo. He, he took it. He, he, Man interference, they called with the bases loaded. Would have been my first grand slam, Carl. So ground rule double? Ground rule double, and they allowed all three runners to score because there were two outs and they were going on the pitch. Okay. Good read by the umpires. Sorry about that. Sitting on that fastball in, he knew it was coming. And after the game, I was so proud. I was like, I just hit David Cohn pretty hard right there. And Coney comes out saying, well, he was supposed to hit me hard. It was a 3-1 pitch. That's why he's in the big leagues. So that was it? One at bat? That's it? No, oh, I think you had me the first two times, but I, I deleted those. <laughs> One for three. Yeah. With three ribbies. Three ribbies. <laughs> I'm good. Take it to the house. Eddie has a highlight resume reel that he keeps. So anytime he knows it's a good time to call it up, we'll very short. Cue it up. <laughs> <laughs> short video. Get in, get out. See if Abrams is inclined to do anything with two down and on first base. Not going. Grisham looks at a high one that misses at 99. You know, the thing you look for with Strider in that four seam fastball is not just the velocity, it's the carry, mm -hmm. and the spin efficiency. That's what we saw from Darvish earlier. His, his four, four seamer kind of backed up early in the game, and then all of a sudden it started to, to stay true and have some riding action on it. That's what you look for with Strider, up in the zone especially. Way up and a lot of ride. And we've learned over the last couple of years this idea that the fastball quote unquote rises. The truth is it, it doesn't sink. 
because hitters are trained to see the ball go down. It doesn't go up, but it stays on plane. Yeah, it just doesn't come down as much. Right. It gives the illusion of kind of a rising or riding fastball. Two balls, no strikes to Grisham. He misses again up top, 3 0. Rocket ship rise through the system from low A Augusta to the Braves pen in 21. And back to back walks. Every pitch from the stretch missed up. What does that tell you on that one, even though the K zone had it as a strike in the top part of the zone? It tells me that when you're inconsistent or you're wild high that it's hard to get those borderline calls because umpires definitely like to anticipate the flow a little bit and if you're all over the place you're not going to get those borderline calls especially the high ones at the top of the zone. Now Bob Melvin told us pregame one of the things that we have been doing with all the strikeouts the last two days we've got to be more patient they have now drawn seven walks tonight. Took something off there with an 85 mile an hour slider in there for strike one. So if that was a game plan, it's paid off. Seven walks, a hit batter. They've also left seven men on base. Yeah, that's the key. 11 base runners and only two runs. Yep. Nola, way outside. We did that game. Braves Reds Thursday Major League opener he struck out five of the six he faced and the entire Clemson baseball team texted him of course he went to Clemson the whole team one ball one strike way inside pops out of Darno's glove but no advance from Abrams Good speed on the bases with Abrams and Grisham. The hardest thing for a young pitcher to do, Eduardo, as you know, is just to slow yourself down that half a beat. And he's just a little quick with his delivery, and that's causing him to, to miss up, to get behind the ball a little too much, instead of extending out there and reaching right through the catcher. Beaten into the ground, charged by Swanson, gets it on that hop, and he's able to throw the runner out at first. Yeah, he did not use that fastball very often in that bat to Nola, and he gets the ground ball. Four, five, and six do up in a two-nothing game to the seventh. Welcome back. You Darvis, three base runners. No one's advanced past second. Yes. Planning ahead is brought to you by Voya Financial. They do some planning ahead, but the Padres tend to kind of plan in the moment. Like, all right, what do we got to address? We got to address pitching, and much of it has come via the trade, including Sean Manaya from Oakland. Now, Mackenzie Gore threw the other day and looked really good. He's one of those guys that they are hoping they develop, and he becomes the guy that they think he's going to become the lefty with some good power. Just want to see everybody get healthy for the Padres. All those moves, all those trades, all that talent. Uh, obviously centers around Tatis Jr. when he comes back, but Clevenger is a part of that. Yep. When they get the full Monty working, we'll finally see what these Padres can really do. And maybe for the second half. Two balls and a strike as you Darvish continues to Pump it in there. Only 81 pitches here with nobody out in the seventh inning. <laughs> Loud sound to left field and looking up, going back, still going back, and it is gone. Marcel Ozuna, his fourth home run of the season. And the Atlanta Braves are on the board as he takes Darvish deep. 
Well, he got himself in the hitter's count. Ball exits, exits to the ballpark at 109.1 miles per hour. 407 feet distance, and this is what Marcelo Zuna can do. He can hit a heater. Gets that bat head out there. Challenges him with the number one down in the zone. Knows how to elevate it. And Marcelo, as soon as he hit it, he knew. Hands are quiet the entire time. They come up a little bit, catches it out in front. Let's the bat head do the rest of the work. You saw Profar in the distance. He went back, stopped, and he said, maybe you got to keep going back because the balls have died tonight. But that one over the wall, and for Marcelo Zuna, his fourth home run of the year, he's got eight RBI. And amongst the Leaders in Major League Baseball. Darno chases a high one at 94, and he swings right through it. The first two-seam fastball that Darvish has thrown kind of took a seat, didn't keep running in. Nozuna did not miss it, just dropped the barrel of the bat on it and launched. Twenty-two hard hit balls leading the bigs. Of course, Ozuna's bat being back is a huge boon to the Braves. Of course, Ozuna missed last season or much of it after a domestic violence incident. He apologized to his teammates. He watched the World Series from at home in the Dominican. An embarrassing situation for Ozuna who claims to have learned a great deal from it. And then he went right back to work played winter ball and not only did he play winter ball he played left field tried to get in his best shape as he could because he knows most likely when Ronald Acuna Jr. comes back mm -hmm. he's going to be the designated hitter mm -hmm. he loves playing the outfield but the reality is that in order for him to be effective out there he has to charge the ball every time it's hit to him on the ground if there's a runner in scoring position as hard as he can because the arm isn't the same as it once was. Four homers ties him with Albi. Seiya Suzuki who's off to a flying start for the Cubs. Arenado's been the first two week MVP for the Cardinals. CJ Crone has been great. He's got five to lead the league. Darno swings and misses wildly at that one. And Darvish picks up punch out number eight. Thing Darvish has always been able to do is spin a slider and you can see right there a great shot of the gyro spin and then turning over and getting the depth on that slider. Wilson now up. For the Padres. As Alex Dickerson steps in. 2-1 game. Ball number one over on ESPN2, the K Rodcast. The aforementioned Stephen Kwan joins the telecast. I was wondering quando, quando, quando he was going to be on. Oh, I understand the when, 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 but the whole show me the Kwan from Jerry Maguire also came up during Kwan's streak. He keeps hitting like that. There's going to be a lot of Kwan in Kwan's life. <laughs> A counter culture going on in Cleveland. I mean, right? Terry Francona has always been a great baseball guy. They've, they've been a pitching factory there. They've really developed pitching very well in Cleveland for several years now. Now a high contact lineup. Yep. Kind of interesting to watch them as they try to do the best to, with what they have over there in Cleveland. There's a couple of teams it feels like every year in Major League Baseball, the Guardians and the Rays, like they're just going to, they are going to be good. Doesn't matter who they have, they're just going to be good. Two balls, no strikes. Starvish to Dickerson. Ends one in there, two and one. How about the most self-proclaimed unluckiest man in baseball right there in the first week and a half of the season, Alex Dickerson. <laughs> Says, I've hit the ball hard right at guys. I think I've made what? What did he say, Carl? Maybe four or five plays of the week. Line shot like that off the screen. Yeah, I think he said seven or eight top plays. 
based on somebody doing something against me. He loves being here with this team. It's a fun group to be around. And it's interesting, you know, he's played for a few years on teams that weren't competitive. The realization of a World Series title, a team that's expected to win, what that does to you every day you go to the ballpark. This one on the ground to second. He runs it out, but Abrams there to make the play. Well, you Darvish really, you know, the, the solo shot notwithstanding has been very good. He's pitched off his fastball, and that was the scouting report coming in. You see the true four-seam ride, and now the two-seamer running in very hard. I mean, that's a great combination. He has really made that pitch work so that when he does go slider and off speed, it's that much more effective because you've, you've got to respect the fastball now when he's throwing it and establishing it, and he's always had great spin on that slider. Pitching in front of almost 38,000 here at Petco Park tonight. Throws the ball one to Austin Riley. Yeah. Much more like his opener against Arizona than that dud in the middle against the Giants. One earned run, eight strikeouts. Limited base runners. Trying to get through the seventh. Another one, he spins in there at 83. One ball, one strike. Sixty two strikes and thirty two balls from Darvish out of those ninety four pitches. Cutter his slider moving away from the right hand of yours has been so effective. Looks for his ninth strikeout. Pitch number 96 on the way. Laced into left. That's going to get down. Profar is going to give chase. Austin Riley is going to head into scoring position and slide in with a double. Bob Melvin is now walking slowly towards the mound after Darvish got tagged by Austin Riley. Again, Duvall gets the third. Duvall, I'm sorry. The third time in this pitch that he gets that spinner this time he stayed on it sold out to it gambled guessed right ends up at second and use night is over Adam Duvall who has not hit the ball very well tatered that one into the corner that sends Darvish to the showers and it brings Wilson into the game so Duvall on second he's the tying run Eddie Rosario due up when we come back Change your bat. It's a homer. Why do you change your bat? Uh, we told him, right? <laughs> Did he change the bat for the home run? I guess he probably used an Andrew Jones bat that because he leads the Braves in home runs here at Petco with nine. <laughs> Maybe. Well, here's Steven Wilson, eighth round pick out of Santa Clara in 2018. He will pump it up there, 97 to 100, as he faces Rosario. Runner goes, Rosario to center. Grisham is there, and that will do it. But like Strider, who throws hard, it took one pitch to get out of the inning. Wilson comes in and throws one pitch to get out of the inning and strands a runner. In San Diego, Tony Gwynn, Mr. Padre on the outside. His statue is ESPN's telecast of Sunday Night Baseball is presented by Taco Bell. The Atlanta Braves haven't stolen a base all year. You saw Adam Duvall running. It looked like he had that base stolen. Rosario then popped out to center field to end the inning. 
You can suit up this year at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your favorite team at MLBShop.com. Right, Buster, we see the 19th, Tony Gwynn, the statue. You've told us many stories this weekend about Tony Gwynn and his pursuit one year of that 400 batting average. Hit 400 in 1994. He was batting 394 when the strike began. And in that last road trip before the strike began, he went 19 for 40, hit 475. His knee was feeling good, and he told me he had a plan. If he was close and had a chance to do it, he was going to use a bat called Seven Grains of Pain. And what that bat was was one he would use only against pitchers who threw breaking balls, and he was going to use it down the stretch if he had shot at 400. As you guys know, they didn't finish the season. He didn't hit 400. And the next spring, he broke the Seven Grains of Pain mm. in an exhibition game. You experienced any of the grains of pain there, Cody, against? Uh... I get asked the question a lot. You know, who was the toughest hitter you ever faced? And so before they even finished the question, him, that statue right here, him. <laughs> he was. Everything good about baseball, Tony Gwynn off the field, as much as it was on the field. 98 World Series, what he meant to the city. and. Eduardo, the quickest hands. It just seemed like he could wait so long to recognize pitches. Just to our left is Tony Gwynn Jr. Center field, crowd liked it, but it's not going to go very far except into the glove of Adam Duvall. One man down here in the bottom of the seventh. Tony Gwynn against David Cohn in the 94 All-Star game. And it was Anthony Gwynn who reminded me of that moment, Coney. <laughs> Coney, are you ever going to get an out today? <laughs> <laughs> he was that good of a hitter. He really was. And We talk so much about back-to-ball skill now. And guys, it's not only that. I remember having, when I was playing first base and Brett Boone was playing second base for Cincinnati, we were at the time in Riverfront Stadium and he came up, got his base hit, where, obviously in the 5-6 hole, comes over to first base and says, hey, if you and Booney keep moving like that right before the pitch is thrown, I'm always going to get a hit. I was like, you saw us? You're a left-handed hitter and you saw the second first baseman he goes I see everything hmm. I was like wow well, one of the great baseball memories you have I have 99 all-star game at Fenway Park when Ted Williams came out in the golf cart and Tony Gwynn was right there to greet him and just the respect that they each had for each other collection of talent on that field that night hmm. Manny that's going to be foul I mean, generationally, there's just a few guys that transcend the generation they play in. He was one of those guys. He was, and if you wonder, if, would he have adjusted to today's modern game? Absolutely. He could hit for power. He sacrificed power for average, but he could launch. Boy, I remember that, too. I mean, it wasn't just hits he gave up to him. He took me deep a couple times, too, when, when he wanted to. 2-2 Two -two to Manny. Right center field. Duvall's there for another one. Get a little antsy when the ball goes in the air, but the ball's falling in the ballpark tonight a lot. Close to the area where Adam Jones actually stole a home run from Manny Machado at the time. They were teammates with the Baltimore Orioles, and they were playing in the World Baseball Classic in this stadium. So Machado batting in the cleanup spot. First time this year is 0 for 3. I get a text message from Brett Boone saying, I'm convinced the only hitter that actually aimed the ball, the only one, Tony Gwynn.
Swing and a miss from Hosmer. Now, could, was Ichiro close to being able to aim the ball? Ichiro had such speed that he could pound it on the ground, and he, he'd have 50-plus infield hits a year. Ichiro definitely wouldn't have been an exit velocity guy, that's for sure. It was about more negative launch angle for him, just hit it on the ground and go. 50 infield hits a year was probably low for him in, in his peak. Oh, and two to Hosmer. Two hard hit balls in the inning. There's one that's going to go foul. So 742 feet of outs from Cronenworth and Machado. 362 and 380 off the bat. Two strider right here just elevates the fastball. It's been late. Threw him three sliders, and now the fastball, if he elevates, might have a chance to get him to chase. This is kind of an example of a four o'clock start where there's such an always has been a big difference between how the ball carries during the day and how it carries at night. What we saw in batting practice during the day is different than what we're seeing now. And takes it right out of the glove. Sure did. It's up at home. A lot of hands of action. Got to be quiet with the hands. One for three. Hosmer has been good with two strikes this year, and that's another one that goes foul. Coming in, he was seven for 21 with two strikes this season. The rest of the Padre team had been hitting 125. I'll tell you one thing that Haas will do is compete. He will compete every at bat, and then when he's on base, he just is thinking all along with the defense. Stays alive here. He's always had a big personality, a clubhouse leader. Was the leader of those Royals teams that went to the World Series. Still beloved in Kansas City. And even Bob Melvin talked about that in the clubhouse. That, you know, the, the team gravitates to him because of that big personality. Still got some years and some money on his contract. And Strider. Has seen Hosmer foul a bunch off here. 0-2. They did call time. Pass owning up to it. Yep, no, he called it. That's on me. Just in case you have a hundred in your back pocket, just to let you know that was me. Another foul ball. Hey, best coverage in today's game. Let's take a look at Hosmer's swing through the T-Mobile multi-view. See how his hands are move back and behind his body. Look in the right hand side from our home plate camera. Need to keep him quieter and that's one thing that he's been working on the entire time with his hitting coach. Is try to soften the load on the way back and keep those hands as still as possible. He's been working on it. Last year his hands were above his head. This time around his face area this time they're around the Padre logo and that's what he's trying to do bring him back towards the umpire not towards the dugout way inside Eric has fouled 12 balls off today the really good hitters the really good hitters the consistent hitters Juan Soto Jordan Alvarez they don't move their hands at all Haas has been battling that because he understands this is who I am and this is who I've always been. Good battle there. That ball had some significant spin on it out of the hands of Strider. But this is what Haas does. Battles at bats. Big cases, how can we get him to hit the ball in the air more consistently? Next one. And a line shot stays in the air and into the glove of Dansby Swanson. Good battle from Hosmer, but it's won by Strider. We're through seven. 12 pitch at bat ends with an out. Three featured upcoming NHL matchup. Tuesday night ESPN to Kings and the Ducks. That's at 10 Eastern time. 7 Pacific in the Honda Center. Thursday night, Leafs Lightning at 8. 
two of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And our ABC Saturday hockey matinee, the Bruins hosting the New York Rangers, 3 o'clock Eastern time, 2 Central. The pitcher on the mound for the Padres and a new right fielder, Luis Garcia, two-thirds of an inning. And Jose Azucar has gone into play right field. Matt Beatty out. Start with Dansby Swanson as we play the eighth inning of a 2-1 ball game. And that one runs a little high. Oof, gets a generous called strike. Pony up here is like, yep, I like that. In the front door, maybe around the front door. Dansby 0 for 2 with a couple of punch outs. Been a rough start for Dansby with the strikeout numbers this season. Dansby usually chokes up on the bat, but chokes up even more with two strikes. Right now, he's already at the two strike approach when it comes to where he is with the bat. Two fingers off the knob. But he's had a lot of damage and done damage with two strikes in his career. Last 10 home runs he's hit, including the postseason. Look at the counts, guys. Eight out of the last 10 hmm. of his home runs with two Ks. Asked him before the game, so what's the difference? He said, um, I choke up a little bit more. Then why don't you do it from the get-go? In the beginning, it's this one hard on the ground. Hassan Kim, easy play. Ozzy Albies has been wearing a microphone all night long. It was creeping. Were you creeping to get to second base? Huh? Were you have a big lead? Yeah. Was... I'm going to get there and do me, because we got to get him. That ball started over there. <laughs> no, I know. That ball started over here. Hey, that ball started on me. <laughs> what the heck is that? Garcia starts Ozzy off with strike one. Ozzy three homers in the three games here. It'll be his last chance to try to do something no one's done in a four game series at Petco. Go deep in each game. This is away. But Dansby, I saw that number. Three straight years he has struck out in each of the first 10, now 11 games. For the first time since 1913, no other player ever struck out in the first 10 games of each three straight seasons. Ozzie's asked Bryce Harper if he'll be kind enough to wear the microphone next Sunday when we go to Philadelphia for the Brewers and the Phillies. Two balls and a strike. Two and two. So another reminder, next Sunday night, we will be in the city of brotherly love where the Brewers bring all those arms to take on Joe Girardi, Bryce Harper, and the Phillies. See it on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio. We'll start at 5.30 Eastern time on ESPN and the app with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Word out of Philadelphia is Harper has said, okay, thumbs up. I know we're grateful, but I do think it does add a tremendous amount to the viewer at home to see what the player doing during the game and how they're communicating well beyond our conversations with him. Ozzy not going to hit a homer here. On the ground, Manny Machado. He could still play shortstop if they needed him to. Strikes down Albies. The science of shine. Lightning fast with ultra durable, super hydrophobic results. Mother's CMX line of car care products. The advanced science of shine. So here's Matt Olson, who is two for three tonight. 
He came in 14 for 34 with an on base percentage of 556. Strike one. That on base leads the league this year. It's the highest by any player over his first 10 career games with the Braves since the team moved to Atlanta back in 66. Think about the shoes he's filled and the idea that he's producing. Bob Melvin, who had him for years with Oakland, said, I'll, I'll reserve my comments until we're done with this series. Matt Olson is always going to be one of the best players on the team he plays for. I mean, it's a quiet leader. Doesn't say much. Let's the bat do all the talking and his glove as well. Remember Matt Chapman who played with him many of years with Oakland said look yeah everybody talks about my defense but the reason I play so deep is because I just have to throw it in the area code of Matt Olson. He will catch it at first base. One ball two strikes to the big first baseman. That's high. So you've talked a lot about Hosmer and his hands. What's the significant difference between what Olsen does and what Hosmer does? If you're a golfer, just think about going back before our, when you have your swing. You have more control of that club head. Well, the same thing happens here. His hands are there, but look how quietly he brings them back. And ready to go. On the ground, Machado. Good inning for Garcia out of the bullpen. Just what Bob Melvin wanted. And Matt Olson quietly right there, letting the ball get deep and keeping it fair, understanding the strike zone, and most importantly, trusting his hands. Welcome back everyone to Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. Our telecast is presented by Taco Bell. Buster only down in the field up here in the booth. Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, Carl Ravitch. We take a look at our game track brought to you by Geico. That guy right there, home run. Matt Olson's got a couple of hits, but it's San Diego behind you. Darvish's strong outing. Got themselves a one run lead and their closer, Taylor Rogers, up in the bullpen. Will be pro far to lead things off. Rogers, another one of the AJ Preller late acquisitions. Strider, who's already giving you two and two thirds, continues to throw for the Braves. On the bottom of the zone, 0 and 2. It's been about a week since he last pitched. Nasty Strider didn't rely on that hundred. Profar is gone. Here comes Azokar for his first at bat. Yeah, we, we tend to talk about pitchers and velocity and their arm action, but really it's the lower half that leads. And Strider, great coil. The way he uses his legs generates a lot of arm speed. Can't throw the can't throw the ball 100 miles an hour without being strong on your lower half. Jose Azucar first pitch that's down. So with Strider there, no Luke Jackson. He's done for the year. The bullpen was dynamite last year. Are they better? Possibly. Yes. I mean, look at that coil. The way he uses that leg kick and then drives off the back leg. Potentially it very well could be better. The key is the buy in once everybody gets bumped down the order mm -hmm. that everybody has a team mentality and they're willing to pitch in any spot. Mm, that'll eat your hands up 97 right in on. And I think winning helps. But great balance and then the leg kick the coil and the way he finishes every all his momentum is right through the target. Has abnormally strong thighs. If you see the size of his thighs. Now 
that one misses away, and that's a walk. Yeah, I know we were talking with Brian Snitker before. Buster only said, I love comps. Can you give me a comp to Strider? And Brian Snitker said, I, you know, I'm hesitant to do any of that, but he brought up the name Craig Kimbrell. It's a pretty good comp right there. <laughs> It's interesting they've got him stretched out too as they're riding him pretty good here. 53 pitches thrown so far. See how well he holds runners on now. That's a guy at very good speed. Hassan Kim very late on 98. Golden Glove winner when he played in the KBO. And he looks at one right down the pipe, 97. He was part of the Nexon Heroes, Eddie, the Key Womb Heroes now. Two time Golden Glove Award winner. One thing that we both know from having covered the KBO is you didn't see this kind of velocity there right. consistently. That's right. Maybe the best bat flips in the world, though, right? The KBO? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it didn't matter if they were home runs or not. <laughs> so had a four-year, $28 million deal on New Year's Eve 2020. Ozarkar going. Darno's throw way offline, and he picked that easy. Jose Azarkar off and running with a stolen base. High leg kick right there. And it was a great jump by Azarkar. No chance as Ozzy Albies has a conversation with him. But watch this throw. This almost hit Strider. Yep. Darno not known for his catch and throw ability. It's more of offense first. Stole that one off Strider with the combination. Kim strikes out. Here's Abrams trying to get the insurance run in. Popped up to the seats. John Newcomb warms for Atlanta. If they can extend it. So there's so many ways of scoring from third base. I wouldn't be surprised if they just let Ascar be athletic here, even with a left-handed hitter at the plate. If he can get a jump, be 90 feet away. Abrams has the ability to bunt with a runner third. That was inside, nearly got him. Abrams singled and scored in the second. The Padres get both of their runs in the second inning. He went. That's a strike. Abrams homered here in the opener. Quite a moment against the team, of course, that he grew up rooting for. Truth is, if Tatis were healthy, he'd probably be in the minor leagues playing every day, getting reps. One and two. Jam shot, and that's going to get into the seats. As electric vehicle driving becomes quieter, so do our tires. Electrified Hanguk. Hanguk Tire. Maybe, as Buster said, late June, early July with that fracture wrist. One ball, two strikes to Abrams. Azarkar, great speed at second. Dancing but not going anywhere, and a swing and a miss. Really good from Strouder out of the bullpen tonight. Three and a third for the reliever. Last chance, and the closer coming in. He'll get Wiley, Ozuna, and Darno.
On Sports Center's next, John Anderson, Kevin Connor, star of the Braves Padres game, will join the postgame. Matt Barnes will analyze the NBA playoffs opening weekend. Celtics Nets game was incredible with a buzzer beater layup from Tatum. Plus the journey of the Warriors, Swan Toscano Anderson and the third grade teacher that changed his life at Sports Center. It's next, it's right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. So here's Taylor Rogers, twin brother of Tyler. Three games, three saves, last appeared on Monday night against the Giants. The team his twin brother plays for. First time the Twins pitched against each other in the same game in baseball history. It'll be a challenge. You'll get Riley, Ozuna, and Darno. All one down. Austin Riley can do this. Most homers, 25 or younger since the start of last year. Guerrero's kind of running away with it, but there's Tatis, who, by the way, has been hurt for so long. Second, Riley with 35. We'll check first. No, two balls, no strikes. That was close. I had him going on that. Yeah, Looked out. Not too close, Coney. I think there's an easy way to fix that rule. What is it? Just have a plane like the end zone in the NFL. Have a plane right in the middle of home plate going straight up. And if the bat head enters the strike zone, it's a swing. Break the plane. You break the plane with the bat head. If you're in the strike zone with your bat head. So an invisible plane? How do you see that? Well, we have technology. I yes, like we, could, we could easily call that up. Three and one. It's interesting that. If there is an automatic automated strike zone, that that's going to be based on the plane in the middle of home plate. That's right. I think you could use that same concept for a check swing. Three balls, one strike. Rogers to Riley. Big swing at it. And he swung at Rogers' pitch right there, 3 1. Open in. Widen the zone a little bit. That pitch was down and away, maybe in the strike zone, but it's not a pitch that Austin really wants to chase 3 1. Two homers, five RBI on the season. He's really good against breaking balls last year with an over 300 average, but he's gone there. Rogers, strikeout number one here in the ninth. Sweeping slider that Rogers can throw when he wakes up in the morning rolling out of bed He could paint that pitch and you see that lower three-quarters angle kind of a slinging action That promotes that sweeping horizontal movement I think Ozuna is going to get its a dose of just sliders right here Be surprised if he challenges them in the zone with the heater Good pitch outside corner 94 and guess what I think Marcel was thinking the same thing wait a second sitting on slider instead paint laid on that right on the ground right to where Hosmer was standing and Rogers is an out away from putting this one in the wind column. Out here at Petco, 37,000 plus are here to start it. They're all here to see it conclude. Travis Darno, 0 for 3 with a couple of punchies against Rogers.
That's going to get into the seats, and he's a strike away. How about the ability of being able to hit your spots? You saw against Ozuna right there outside corner this time. Comes hard in against Darno. Check this swing. They'll look at first. He did not go. Another life for Darno. Right call. Did not break the plane. There we go. <laughs> that one he did break the plane. He swung and it was caught. Strikeout for Rogers. Padre salvage a split in the series. You Darvish outstanding tonight to start and the ball.